Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and indeed thank you very much if you have come back. I can't apologise enough for the time it's taken to get this first build video out to you. I'm a bit of a boomer and I've had some technical issues. We'll talk about that on the other side. In the meantime, we've had an upgrade, so I'm so happy to finally bring you Agora Models 1.8 scale 1965 Shelby Cobra 427 semi-competition. Skolzy, run the intro. There's a lot of designing, testing, and trial runs behind every new innovation or new performance record. How do I know? My name's Carol Shelby, and performance is my business. So I'm gonna try and be as brief as I can explaining this issue I've had. I'm really over it now, but it is going to affect the first two stages of this first video. So basically what happened, pack one comes with six stages to build. So I'd recorded a whole video covering stages one to three. When trying to upload and render that video, it just wouldn't do anything, wouldn't render at all for me. My last option, I exported to a laptop. When I did that, it corrupted about 90% of my footage, which was unusable. That included a really nice introduction to all six stages in their packs, a overview of tools you're going to need, and none of it worked. In my desperate dark efforts to get something on film, I in fact filmed stages one and two multiple times, to the point now where some of these parts are showing signs of damage and I really don't want to disassemble them. I've got replacement parts from Agora models coming to fix that. We've got newer hardware to fix any of the recording problems, hopefully. So that's enough of my face. I'm really ready to build this Cobra now. So let's get the camera down on the desk and let's start building this model. Okay, let's get this party started, even though I've been seemingly kicked out of this party a couple of times already. A little bit of housekeeping. I've got another camera over there for some close-up inserts, hopefully. Part list up on the left here, and hopefully some of the build guide photos, especially for stages one and two here, but hopefully I'll carry that all on. So, without further ado, let's start. Stage one, the hood assembly. Now, the hood, hood in, is actually a die cast piece really nicely painted heavy piece and we've got the air intake here which is a plastic piece but the first thing we've got to do is we flip it over and what we needed to do first was attach two foam rubber strips self-adhesive backing on them and put them just inboard of the bonnet latches just around the bonnet edge there i don't know if you can see those two but the self-adhesive you just peel off the backing and place them both on there and that's to ensure that the bonnet just has a nice soft closure to it. So the next step to do is to attach this air intake and so there are three screws to go into this. So I'll just flip this over now and a little introduction to the screws now. So they're all going to be all sorts of different sizes, but the main two types or the two types that we're going to see is OP screws and OD screws. So OP screws is screws going into plastic. OD screws are screws going into metal. So the D denotes die or die cast in my mind. So they're the two screws types of screw you're going to get. So the air intake goes on with three screws here and the screws we're going to use, the first ones are OPO2 screws and that leads us on to the next thing is this is going to be your main tool that you're going to use for this build if you're doing this build and this is a sort of micro screwdriver, watchmaker screwdriver, it's a Phillips head one, um, it's called a PH0 or a PHO screwdriver so I've actually bought the smaller version of that, which is the PH00 or the PH00 screw, which is just, again, even slightly smaller. Most screws will work with the PHO, but some stuff might just work better with the double O. So that's that. Right, so the first thing to do is to attach the air intake to the bonnet, and we're gonna do that now. 
with the OPO2 screws. So I'm loading the screw up onto the screwdriver. It's a magnetic screwdriver as well, which is really handy with these fiddly bills because you're invariably holding a few things at a time. So I'm just lining up the bonnet with the air intake screw holes here and they just got a little bit of a location on them. So I'm going to just slowly put those in there. So that's screw two. Just hand tight, not tight too much at all. And number three. There you go, that's done. So, those two first steps were quite a nice gentle introduction to the build. Step three is to attach the hood handles here and this was quite a fiddly, tricky one to do. And I've actually damaged some of the parts in here now, the amount of times I've disassembled it. So I really don't want to disassemble any of these parts now. I'm getting some replacements for them which should fix that and I'll do that off camera but I'll just take you through what goes on with this section now so what you've got is the hood handles which are plastic chrome plated so they've got a shaft on them and they go through a hole through the bonnet and then we have the brass hood latch which is the actual locking mechanism then we have a spring and then there is a locking ring above that and then there is the screw which the one we're going to use for this part or the one I used for that part was the OPO1 screw. So it was a case of just holding them all together, putting your hand on this side of the bonnet and just screwing in the part. In this part of the pack we actually got the Cobra bonnet or hood badge as well for use in a later episode. I don't know if you can see that at all. There you go. So we put that aside safely. We put our spare screws aside safely and maybe mark them if you want and put them in a little pill box or something like that. But that is stage one hood assembly complete. Stage two is the left front wheel and hopefully you're getting the gist of how this is going together and I can just talk you through this part now quite quickly. Hopefully it's the last piece of pre-assembly you're going to see during this build. So let's take you through steps one through three. So the first thing to do, they want you to do, is get the tyre and put it in hot water to soften it up and make it pliable for fitting the rim inside. But in the in-between time, you can start fitting the wheel. So that comes in three parts and that is the metal wheel inner, the outside rim, which is plastic, and the inside rim which is plastic. Now the inner wheel comes with four location lug holes on it for screws. You attach that to the outer rim with OPO3 screws. You then get the inner rim and that has four more lug holes for screws in it and you clamp the two pieces together in with the wheel in between and again that's with four OPO3 screws. You then get the tyre back out of the hot water and with a little bit of brute force and a little angling, um, that goes in there quite easily. It's nice and pliable and malleable by then, that tyre. So that's how you produce that part. Hopefully you've got that. Steps four onwards, we're going to do an actual bit of construction. The first part of that is to get what they're calling the free-eared knock-on. I've never heard it called that, a knock-off or a free-winged knock-off or a spinner. It's got a magnet on the back of it and that's how it's going to attach to the wheel. But there is a hub cap on the front here. These are both plastic parts. Um, the hub cap has a pin on it and the knockoff has a hole in it and it's just a friction fit that you just press together and that goes together quite nicely. And then a little bit of construction. So then we have the wheel hub, the brake disc and the brake caliper. These two are plastic, this is metal. So we're going to be using our first die cast or screw for this. So the first little step in this is to get the brake disc and the wheel hub and just pass the wheel hub shaft through the brake disc. The wheel hub has a little location pin and a little screw hole in it. 
we then get the brake caliper this has location holes and screw holes in them and you just slide that over the wheel hub location pin and that just sits like that there lay that down and we're going to use an Odeo one screw for that so that is one of those this is another little bit of housekeeping i'm going to show you a little tip to do now so what i've got is some three in one oil and we're just going to use that to help the screw go into the metal part sometimes they're not cast out properly so there's a little bit of metal in there so a bit of oil just helps that screw go in there quite nicely so i've just put some of the three in one oil there just to help us out i'm going to load up the screw here and just dip it in the oil there and then just drive that in nice and slowly and that is really it's like butter again just hand tight that's good enough so that's the disc and brake caliper together with the wheel hub So we get the wheel back over and we're going to attach these two parts now. So the brake disc came with a little notched location part here. And the back of wheel has a little notches as well to uh, correspond with those. So what you do is just place that in there, locating it together and that sits in there nicely. Flip over the wheel and we've got a screw hole of the shaft of the wheel hub is there and we're going to use an odo 2 screw so again we're going to dip it in the oil i'll we'll just lay that there pick up the whole assembly and then just slowly that in there that fits you nice there the final part for this stage is to attach that knockoff and again as i said it had a magnetic piece on the back so that just sits in there like that and that looks really really like a Halibrand cobra wheel now okay on to the next stage and i can't tell you how glad i am to get those previous two stages over and done with now um, it's been a really steep learning curve trying to build and film at the same time. I commend anybody that can do it. I've probably broken three pieces in the last two stages now, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep putting videos out and with your support, we're going to get better at doing it. So stage three is the steering wheel and exhaust parts. So this is the last surviving window pack we got, like the previous first two stages, which you didn't see. And they've actually come with two parts that we're not going to need till a later date. And the first one is the roll bar, which is metal. And the driver's seat cushion, which is plastic, but with a lovely bit of fabric, vinyl, leather, I guess, on there. It's really nice to see Agora using textiles and different mediums in this build. But we're not going to need those two parts yet. The first part we're going to need is the steering wheel, which again is metal. And the, and the badge or the horn, which you go on there. And all you do is get the steering wheel and line the badge the right way up. It's got two pegs there and two holes in here. It's going to be a friction fit again. Just line that up. And that pops in there quite nicely. That looks really, really nice. We we'll bring the pack back over. And we're going on with the exhaust parts now. Get those out. So we've got the exhaust cylinder and the exhaust tip. And as you can see, the cylinder and the tip have locating notches on them. And all you've got to do is slide that in there and again a friction fit and that fits quite nicely in there and that is stage three over and done with okay on to stage four the engine and more exhaust parts and we're really getting into the meat and potatoes of things now this packet is open because 
I did do step one, but I didn't go any further before I was halted. So we'll start that again. So step one is assembling the air filter grill. And that consists of two plastic parts, the top which is vac metalized there and the bottom. And I'm assuming it's a photo etched part. It's the metal grill that goes in between. And it's a case of constructing those three parts together. So what you get first is the, the bottom of the air filter. And that has a little channel running through it. I don't know if you can see. And what you're gonna try and do is feed the grill around that. They do advise, and I have done already, is to curve the grill around a pen, a fat pen or a wooden spoon or something like that. So give you a nice even curve to help you start getting it round. So this is either goes in first time or you have a bit of trouble with it. <clears throat> so just get the grill start feeding it in that channel around there and that goes together so the bottom has two screw holes with little recesses in them and the top half has the corresponding screw pegs and we're just going to try and align them and that should clamp the two parts together, keeping the grill inside. So it just goes in like that and we've got away with it, I think. So the grill just protrudes out there a little bit. So we just get a screwdriver or a pair of tweezers. And we just pop that in there like that. And that is ready now, that is sat in there. That should stay together for us. And that's what that part looks like in there, very recognizable, I would say. And we're gonna secure those with two OPO4 screws. That is step one done. Step two of stage four is to attach the bottom of the carburetor to the air filter. And the air filter has a little D-shaped peg there and the carburetor has a corresponding D-shaped recess. So it's a matter of lining those two up like that. Yep, and that only locates one way, so put that there and that gets fixed in with one OPO3 screw that's on there so the next step is to attach the top of the carburetor with the bottom and the air filter the bottom has a little location pin in one corner and the top has a little locating hole in the corresponding corner. It's a matter of just lining that up and putting that together like that. And they're going to be put together with two OPO5 screws. So I'll do that now. And that's that part done. After that, it's uh, attaching the carburetor housing, which is a plastic part. And the bottom of the carburetor has a little locating pin again there. And we just slot that through. And that goes through there. And we're gonna attach that with a type OPO3 screw.
and that's that done. Right, we're really stacking pieces now. So the next piece is the actual engine block. And this is a die cast metal piece, really nicely cast, nice and heavy. And again, all of these pegs and pins help us locate each part to each other. So we're just gonna line those, place that in there. That sits nicely on top. Starting to look like an engine now. And again, we use one more OPO free screw into there. And that is that done. So that's all the engine parts done in this pack of stage four. Um, step three of this stage is back to the exhaust system. So I'll get those out now. And they're all going to be a friction fit. So I'll put the screwdriver away. But we are going to need the left hand exhaust assembly that we completed earlier in stage three. So the first thing to do as before, with the tip and the cylinder. This is the exhaust collector. And again, it has a location notch in it and the cylinder will accept that. So it's a case of lining up again. And then just popping that in like that. And then we move on to actually putting the exhaust into the exhaust collector. The exhausts are all numbered and the collector is numbered on the faces of it as well. So what you want to do is just start placing the exhaust in each of their corresponding holes, but it's not quite that simple. So I really don't know if you can see any of that, but number one goes in this slot. And each of these exhausts has a flat edge on it with the number on. And what you're gonna be wanting to do is pair them up. So one will face four, and two will face three. So what we're gonna do is put number one in number one slot like that. And I've got the number, the flat edge of the exhaust facing number four's slot. So then I get exhaust four and with the flat face of that again, I then have it facing exhaust one's face and place that in there like that. So then two, and then three's flat face with the number on it. As I said, it's quite fiddly. It's quite hard to get hold of each individual pipe. And I think I might wanna glue those offline at some point. Yeah, they're just, I'm not confident in it. But the collector, we're going to attach the collector now. And I'm sure that's going to gather it all together a little bit. So they're in there. I would say if you want to glue those, go ahead. It's up to you. So then it's a case of getting the exhaust plate. They've got two little, little bolts or four little bolts there that are molded in. And you, what you want them to be doing is facing the rear of the exhaust there. So just line, try and line up each exhaust pipe. There we go. It's a case of just putting that back there. Like I say, I'm not too happy with it, but that's gathered them all together now a bit better. And there you go. Cobra exhaust system nearly complete pretty much complete. That's step three of stage four complete. And in fact, that's the whole of stage four complete. So on to stage five next. Right, I'm feeling a little bit more confident with this process now, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. But now let's push on through with stage five. We've got our first unopened packet that you've seen. And what we're gonna be assembling in this pack is the oil filter assembly and the right hand exhaust assembly like we did in the earlier stages. So the exhaust cylinder and the exhaust tip. So step one of stage five, as we've done before in step three with the left hand exhaust, 
the right hand tip and cylinder have the location notches in them again we just line those up and that pops in there like that so that bit's done and step two is onto the oil filter assembly so the first part to do here is to get the oil filter base or the can of the oil filter and it's got a lovely it's a rotunda filter um, lovely little print on there so the first thing to do is to attach that to the oil filter holder and as you can see we've got location notches and holes as usual so we can't put them on any other way so that just pops on there and everything to do with the oil filter is being secured with OPO3 screws so I'll get that open and we'll get them out get our screwdriver load up a screw and we get the oil filter can top and that's beautifully crimped like the real thing at the top there don't know if you can see that and that is again a friction fit so it should just pop on like that and there you go that's on there the next step to do is attach this spacer to the oil filter holder and again it's all about location pins so we lock everything into place so that just goes over there and we're going to again use an OPO free screw and that's in there like that so the next part to attach to the oil filter is this front engine plate and its plastic part and funnily enough this is the first time that we don't have any location pins or holes to line up things so I'm going to actually load up the screw with another OPO3 and then try and line up these two holes or one of them at least like that that one's in that was tight load up another screw and they're in there so that's those stages complete for the oil filter as I said the oil filter looks really good with that print on it the rotunda oil filter really really good that is stage five complete so we come to the final stage and another unopened pack and it's the right hand exhaust system that we did exactly the same earlier with the left hand so let's just get this open now so again we've got the collector the exhaust plate and the four exhausts here exhaust pipes uh, they're numbered five through eight I think I explained how they orientate and everything earlier on quite well so I'm literally just going to work through it and not say much about how I'm putting it together just attach all the parts and get this all completed so we get the exhaust and the collector same system again the notch goes in we snap it in that goes in lovely then the little tricky bit again of attaching each exhaust pipe so we get exhaust six into the six slot orientate around that way like that number five goes in like that number eight now this, these aren't going in that easily 
and finally number seven I did just try and uh, test run dry fit and this was quite difficult and it, they didn't seem to be in the right positions I'm not sure what was going on but they're not easy to put in there so the plate goes on that orientation and this is a lot harder than the other side like I said I did a little test run off camera and it didn't go at all well they just won't seat in the collector very well but that is that finally done and that was the hardest bit out of the whole pack probably to do um, so that is stage six complete and the whole pack complete and I am over the moon I don't know how to tell you how hard that has been just to put it all on film while you're building it um, so yeah that's pack one complete so here I thought I'd lay out all of our six parts in pack one all beautifully finished especially this bonnet it gives you the first idea of how the body's going to look and it's going to look fantastic fantastic I think um, there's a lot of scope here for any modelers want to do some detail painting in here weathering you could even uh, re-chrome that paint that if you wanted if you're hung up about metalized chrome plastic um, the only thing I'm going to really do is maybe weather some of the outside some of the dent engine detail just weather and grime them up a little bit just to show a bit more of the scale a bit less plastic looking so I've just scuffed up the tire here it was a bit shiny and new so that's the kind of thing I'm only going to do is just sort of weather maybe put some washes on stuff just to give a little bit of um, scale extra scale I know one eight scale it looks pretty good anyway but that's all I want to do is just weather up some of this stuff going forward but yeah fantastic pieces I'm really really happy so that's pack one complete I didn't set out to do it all in one video but with the hardware recording issues I'd had initially I just really wanted to get some content out for you this is a learning experience for me hopefully it's going to evolve so I'd love some feedback on this video on what you liked and what you didn't like so please comment like share and subscribe and I'll see you soon on Scalzi's Scale and Schematics for some more Cobra videos